right, everybody, we are now live on Facebook. Thank you for joining us. Um, just as a quick reminder, I can mute you, but I cannot unmute you. So if you need to speak, you have to unmute your own microphone. Having trouble with the audio from Mr. Charlton. Uh, can you hear me? There you go, Ron. You got me? Okay. I'll do the invocation. Let us pray. Holy God, we come before you this night once again with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thanking you, Lord, for your many blessings that you have so richly blessed each of us with. And Lord, we ask that you would keep your hand of mercy upon this great land. And Lord, through these trying times that we're going through, that you would have mercy and grace upon it. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank I'll you. Go. And you want to go ahead and do the pledge, uh, Chairman? You want me to do the pledge? Yes. Uh, well, uh, imagine there's a, a flag on the screen. Uh, okay. Everyone, uh, please do. We did. I pledge flag. allegiance to the flag of the United, of the United States, States, of America. States of America and to the Republic, to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, One nation uh, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, the next uh, item on the agenda is uh, 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 we're, uh, we're, we're uh, temporarily suspending the public comment. So the next item is the approval of minutes from the regular council session of March 10th, 2020. Is there a motion to approve? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is Lily Jean. You need to adopt the agenda, I believe. Oh, Adoption. thank you. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the next agenda item is the approval of the agenda. Um, is, there, uh, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Mr. Raymond, can I make a motion we approve? Mo a motion by Mr. Newton. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Carolina, I believe. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The agenda is approved. Um, next, we, uh, we have, thank you for uh, Ms. Johnson for uh, pointing that out. Next, we have the approval of minutes from the regular council session of March 10th, 2020. Is there a motion to approve? Mr. Chairman, Ron Charlton, I uh, move that we approve those as written. This is Raymond, uh, second the motion. Motion by Mr. Charlton, is there a second? This is Raymond, I second the motion. Second by Mr. Newton, Mr. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes from March 10th. Aye. Aye. Uh, second by Mr. Uh, Newton. Uh, all in favor? Of, okay. The minutes from uh, uh, March 10th uh, meeting are approved. Uh, we next move to the consent agenda and by virtue of approving the agenda for today, the uh, consent agenda items are approved. Uh, the board appointment of Parks and Recreation Commission, uh, uh, Council Member Goggins, uh, 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 recommends to approve uh, Jim Mallow, uh, a board, board appointment, Georgetown County Fire District 1 Board, Council Member Morant recommends uh, reappointing William Massey, and procurement number 20-013, fiscal 20, municipal lessee purchase financing for vehicles and heavy equipment. Those, those three items are approved by virtue of approving um, the agenda for today. Next, we move to uh, public hearings. Uh, I uh, open the floor for public comments related to ordinance number 20-10, an ordinance to declare a surplus in approximately a half acre portion of land located in the town of Andrews. Is there anyone um, that uh, is at the uh, portal that would like to uh, speak about ordinance number 20-10? Chairman, Hearing Mr. none, Carolina. I will, uh, yes. Uh, I'm simply um, 
making an motion to move forward with the approval um, of the designation of the land as surplus and for the adoption of ordinance 2010. Um, thank, you. Okay. Yep. thank you, Mr. Carolina. Okay, I will now close Mr. the- uh, Mr. Chairman, that's public hearing. Public hearing on ordinance number- 2010, 20-10. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. Oh. We're moving on. Uh, yes, yeah, so closing the public hearing on ordinance number 20-10. Uh, now open the floor for public comments related to ordinance number 20-11, an ordinance to amend the future land use map regarding approximately 2.2 acres located North Morgan Avenue outside of Andrews. Any from the public, uh, not, not from the council, but from any, any public comment on Ordinance number 20-11. Hearing none, I will close the uh, floor for public comments relating to ordinance number 20-11. We now um, open the floor for public comments related to ordinance number 20-13, an ordinance authorizing the execution of a lease and uh, term agreement for property off of Great Avenue in Pauley's Island. Is there anyone from the public who would like to uh, speak about ordinance number 20-13? Hearing none, I will close the floor for uh, public comment. For Say again. Sir, no one has signed up for public comment. Okay. Hearing none, we'll close the floor for public comments related to ordinance number 20-13. We next move to um, third reading of ordinances, uh, ordinance number 20-10, uh, Mr. Bryant. Mr. Chairman, members of council, um, I hope everyone can hear me tonight. And uh, this is the third reading of ordinance 20-10. Uh, this ordinance was amended at second reading and the changes have now been reflected in the ordinance. What this will do is it will authorize the county to uh, deed the property over to the town of Andrews uh, upon their request. Um, and uh, we are ready to move forward with that. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Any questions from council uh, for Mr. Bryant? Okay, um, a note, uh, a motion to amend will be required to incorporate recommended revisions to ordinance and agreement. So I'll open the floor any, any, uh, uh, for any motions for ordinance number 20-09, or 10, I'm sorry. Strike what I just said. We do not need uh, a motion to amend. So we'll open, open the uh, floor for motions uh, for ordinance number 20-10. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we adopt ordinance 20-10. Motion, motion by Mr. Newton, is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Morant. Um, discussion? <clears throat> okay, um, all, all in uh, favor of uh, third reading approval of ordinance number 20-10. Ron Aye. Charlton, yes. Aye. This is Everett. Raymond, Raymond Newton, yes. Lily Johnson, yes. Louis Morant, yes. John Thomas, yes. Okay. Um, any opposed? Um, ordinance number 20 10 is uh, approved on third reading. Next, we move to uh, second reading of ordinances. Ordinance number 20-09. Mr. Bryant, again. Mr. Chairman, members of council, this is the long awaited intergovernmental agreement with the city of Georgetown. I will note that um, Sandra 
you just said from the city is on and also Lawrence Flynn, their legal counsel is also on the meeting tonight. You can probably see them both. Um, this intergovernmental agreement has gone through a few different iterations, but you've already had the presentation made to you by Mr. Flynn. So we won't get into the, to the minutia, but I can tell you that the intergovernmental agreement uh, reflects a uh, village cap that is agreeable to the county. It also reflects a term cap of 25 years. Um, and ultimately, it will begin uh, July 1, 2020. It'll run through uh, the same term, 2045. And honestly, that's really about all I have um, in terms of the agreement. You already are familiar with the terms and what it's going to do in the city's redevelopment plan. Um, if you have any specific questions, we'll be try to, we'll try to answer those. Um, and may like a lens on as well, so we can help out with that. I'm sorry, council members, just a reminder, if you're not currently speaking, please make sure your microphones are muted. We are getting some background noise that's interfering. And, and also to note, this will require an amendment for the updated terminology. Th those are uh, those are the uh, changes that are I see on the um, on the form where some dates are changed. Uh, th are they are they just uh, um, what do you call them Scrivener uh, corrections? Uh, there are no significant there, changes are there? There is nothing significant from the first from the first couple of versions, but um, it's not a not necessarily a Scrivener's error though. But it is it is substantive, but. Um, it's mainly changing the term. The uh, the village cap was already agreed to, um, and it was it, it it was deemed acceptable. So, okay. Are there any questions from council for Mr. Bryant? Okay. I uh, open the floor for motions on uh, second reading of uh, ordinance number twenty dash zero nine, and note that. We will need a motion to amend <clears throat> to incorporate uh, rec uh, revisions to the uh, ordinance and the agreement. Mr. Chairman, uh, Lily Jean, I move for adoption of ordinance number 20-09. A uh, motion by Ms. Johnson. Is there a second? Second, Ron Charlton. I move Mr. Chairman, that we amend this motion to include updated information. Um, Do we need a second first, Wes? You need a second for the amendment. Mm -hmm. Mr. Flynn, could you please mute your microphone? I'm West. sorry, we're getting back. Move 20-09. Mr. Right, Chair, I second, second the motion on the amendment. Okay, Wes, are you there? Yes. 20-10. 20-09. There we go. Okay, second by Mr. Newton. Okay. Okay, so we have a, a, a motion and a second. Uh, Ms. Johnson, I believe now would be the time to uh, have a uh, motion to amend. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think Mr. Newton just uh, seconded the amendment to the motion. So we're ready to vote, I believe, unless there are questions. That's right. He's right, it broke up a little bit, John, but that's right. So you're at the vote for the amendment. All right. Okay, so uh, we have we have a uh, uh, a motion and a motion to amend. Is there a second for the motion to amend? Mr. Newton made that motion to second. So you're at the okay. posture. You're at the you're, you're at the vote. So. All right. So uh, um, where are we, Wes? We, we've got a motion. Vote. Vote for the amendment. Okay. Call for the vote. All right. Um, all in favor of the uh, amendment? Motion to amend. This is Raymond. 
This is Raymond, yes. Lily Jean, yes. Louis Moran, yes. Everett, yes. John Thomas, yes. Okay, so back to the original uh, motion. Um, is there a uh, all in favor of the original motion? Raymond, yes. Lily Jean, yes. Lewis, yes. John Thomas, yes. We get Ron. Okay, the uh, ordinance number 20-09 is approved on second reading. Moving on to um, ordinance number 20-11 an ordinance to amend the future land use map regarding uh, 2.27 acres uh, outside of Andrews. Uh, Mr. Johnson. Okay, thank you. Um, actually 11B and 11C are, are related to the 2.27 acres. Um, 11B, uh, which we're talking about now is the future land use map. Uh, again, this is 2.27 acres uh, located north of Andrews, uh, specifically at 855 North Morgan Avenue. The current, uh, the future, the current future land use map shows the property designated as commercial. Um, they have a rezoning request in, which we're getting ready to go over in a second. Um, they're requesting to go to MR10, which does not uh, conform to commercial on the future land use map. So the planning commission is unanimously recommending that county council uh, change, amend the future land use map regarding this 2.27 acres and change it from commercial uh, to medium density residential. Um, if you'd like for me to run over 11, um, see the rezoning before you vote, would you like me to do that? Uh, I think we usually do. Yes. Okay. Yes, um, let's uh, combine the two. Okay. 11B is the rezoning request I just went over. This is a, actually a request from Wendell Powers who was an agent for the Kindley Family Trust in Andrews. As I said, this is the 2.27 acres on North Morgan. Um, currently, this property is vacant. Um, two rather unique things about the property. First of all, it's about a, it contains a 20 foot wide power line or power easement running through the property. I've noticed the easement is generally parallel to North Morgan and it appears to be about 100 feet off of North Morgan into this property. Uh, the property is a, shaped like a triangle. Um, it's currently, as I said, it's vacant. It's surrounded by forest and agriculture, general commercial, and a little bit of MR10 zoning, which is what they're asking to go to. Um, to the, it's, it's vacant land to the north, south, and east of this property and is commercial and residential property um, mixed to the west. Um, the property is in a flood zone. Um, it currently is. The new flood zone maps will also um, keep part of it in the flood zone. Doesn't mean they can't use it. It just means when they do come in to use it, they'll have to meet the proper uh, elevation requirements for whatever structures they put on the site. Um, as I said, he's asking to go from uh, general commercial to MR10. MR10 is your basic 10,000 square foot single family uh, residential zoning district. Uh, it does, the M stands for mobile homes. It does allow mobile homes. Um, he actually could put mobile homes in general commercial as well. I think what's really driving this request is that general commercial has a 50 foot front setback. Um, and MR10 has a 25 foot front setback and thus their request to go to MR10. Um, I believe their reasoning is that with that power line easement and the shape of the property, and if you apply a 50 foot front setback to it, it's pretty, uh, along with some wetlands that are on a corner too. I say wetlands, uh, what appears to be wetlands on the county maps anyway, um, would make the property pretty difficult to use. Um, Staff did recommend that uh, this rec this rezoning be approved as requested. Uh, we sent out notices to everybody within 400 feet, put a sign on the property, advertised the property. Uh, the Planning Commission held a public hearing on this on February the 20th. Uh, no one came to speak regarding this issue except the applicant. Uh, the Planning Commission did unanimously um, 
adopt the, the staff's recommendation and is recommending to county council that you um, rezone this property, this triangle to MR10, and at the same time amend the future land use map to show it as medium density residential instead of commercial. Uh, that's all I have. Anyone from council have uh, any questions for Ms. Mr. Johnson? If not, uh, I'll open the floor for uh, motions for uh, combined uh, ordinance number 20-11 and 20-12. Mr. Chairman, this is Raymond. I make a motion that we adopt ordinance 20-11 uh, and 20-12. Motion to adopt the ordinance 20-11 and 20-12. Uh, Is there I'll a second, second for? Uh, I'll second it. This is Lewis Moran. I'll second it. Second by Mr. Moran. Discussion? All in favor of ordinance number 20 11 and 20 12. Ms. Raymond, Thomas, yes. Aye. Lily Jean, yes. Lewis, yes. Yes. Mr. Charlton. I think we have a yes from Mr. Charlton. Um, any opposed? Ordinance number 20-11 and 20-12 are approved on second reading. We now move to ordinance number 20-13. Execution of a lease and term extension for property off of Great Avenue in Pauley's Island. Mr. Bryant. Mr. Chairman, members of the council, this is, uh, if you have ever been to the Pauley's Island Recycling Center, you have seen this tower. Uh, it has been there a long time, and it's actually a fairly crucial uh, tower in Georgetown County as it holds the uh, Palmetto 800, one of the system, one of the four systems in the county on this tower. And there's also the Midway Fire Rescue. They have their repeater located on this tower, um, along with some other private uh, structures on the tower from outside firms. But this is a uh, renewal, so to speak, of the lease. The uh, lease had uh, quite a number of amendments over the last uh, 20 to 25 years. The company has changed hands and they've asked that we just start sort of fresh um, using the same terms. This would be for a total of 25 years. Uh, and again, we do, uh, we do have a uh, backside contract with them for our um, our structures that are located on the tower as well. Um, it's the standard lease terminology that you've seen in the past. Uh, there's nothing creative about it. Uh, it has the standard hold harmless, the standard um, provisions for default and that sort of thing. And uh, we are asking that you move forward with this uh, at second reading. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer those. Any questions from council for Mr. Bryant? If not, I'll open the floor for a motion for ordinance number 20-13. Mr. Chairman, uh, Ron Charlton, I move that we approve staff's recommendation on ordinance 20-13. Motion by Mr. Charlton, is there a second? This is Raymond, I second the motion. Uh, second by Mr. Uh, Newton. Um, any discussion? All in favor of uh, ordinance number 20 13? Yes. Ra Raymond, yes. <clears throat> Lewis, yes. Everett, yes. John, yes. All right. Ready? Um, any opposed? Okay, uh, ordinance number 20-13 is approved on uh, second reading. We'll uh, uh, move to first reading of ordinances. Uh, we'll read into the record by title only, ordinance number 20-17 and ordinance number 20-18. Next, we move to um, 
to bids. And uh, on this one, uh, um, Mr. Kilcullen will present it. Uh, I uh, was on the, um, on the committee for this uh, RFQ and therefore uh, I rec recuse myself on this uh, item, Miss um, Johnson. According to the agenda, Ms. Silva should present this. Is that correct? Uh, I've got Mr. Kilcullen, but. Okay. All right. That's what's on the agenda, Mr. Kilcullen. Members of council, this is, this is Ed Kilcullen. The committee received three qualified responses to the request for qualifications. The committee conducted interviews with all three firms. After the interview process, scoring was finalized. Cost proposals were open for the two highest ranked firms. Thompson Price Scott Adams and Company, PA, provided the lowest bid at $25,500 annually. The references were checked and found to be favorable. Therefore, the committee recommends to award Thompson Price, Scott and Adams and Company of Whiteville, North Carolina. I'll be glad to entertain any questions. Are there any questions from council? If not, the floor is open for a motion on this item. May we have a motion? On 20-003. Uh, Ms. Little Jean, this is Raymond. I make a motion that we accept 20-003. Uh, is there a second? This is Lewis. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept 20-003. All in favor, let it be known by giving your name with your vote. Yes, Raymond, Ron, yes. Sure. Lily Jean, yes. Lewis Lewis. Moran. Yes. The motion is carried and we return council to Mr. Thomas, the chairman. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Uh, that brings us to the end of our agenda. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion by Mr. Newton, is there a second? Uh, Mr. Mr. Thomas, I think we have a budget presentation. Oh, thank you, sorry. It's all right. Um, where is it? You be under uh, 15A. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. Reports to council, uh, uh, I, I apologize. Um, reports to council, fiscal 2020 budget status report. Uh, Mr. Kilcullen. Thank you, Chairman Thomas, members of council. What I'd like to show you today is the fiscal year in summary, where we've been, where we are now, and what the potential outcomes are in this COVID environment. Change the slide, please. So this, this is a bird's eye view of the fiscal years revenues and expenditures year to date this year compared to last year. So beginning on the left in the blue bar, we have fiscal year 20 revenue through March 31st, 2020, $69,169.190. By comparison, the orange bar shows fiscal year 19 at $67,704.980. Uh, $1.5 million increase. The third bar over is FY20 expenditures at $61,363,265. Uh, 
And to the far right, the yellow bar is fiscal year 19 expenditures year to date at $53,313,674. Change the slide, please. So real property taxes growth has been as anticipated. The far left value of $35,501,831 was FY16. If you follow the graph to the right for succeeding fiscal years, you will see as anticipated through various tax increases, the revenue has increased. To the right, you have a dotted line beginning with where we are today at March 30th, 2020. We have $40,295,794 in receipts. That is 98% of what we budgeted. If we project to the end of the fiscal year, that would be $41,155,400. All things considered, we probably do expect to collect that remaining 2%. Uh, most of that revenue was collected prior to uh, the status that we're in with the, in the COVID environment. Uh, probably most of this 98% was collected by the March 30, per, excuse me, March 15th deadline. Next slide, please. So you will probably notice that a lot of these screens are similar to last year. Uh, they've been modified to show some possibilities uh, and we added in some additional screens that I'll continue to share with you. So building permits was selected. It's an indicator of uh, general economic activity overall. And the since 2016, as reported on the far left, uh, $988,551, it's been up and down with the average being per year, $1,138,374. To date, as of March 30th, 2020, we have collected $984,277. To the right of that value, you'll see some dotted lines. Those dotted lines are at best guesses of where we're gonna go with the economy through the end of fiscal year 20. Uh, the top line, the one point, the mm -hmm. one million two hundred forty-seven thousand nine hundred seventy-five, is the same value that we had um, finished FY19 with. Um, with the impact of COVID, we're not anticipating going beyond that. We could, but I'm not anticipating that. Uh, the next line, the blue line down, is what it would look like if our revenue came in at. 5% less than prior year. The next uh, projection below that, the $1,123,178 is a projection if we came in at 10% less than prior year. Um, we really don't know how that's going to play out. I will tell you that uh, I, been on some conference calls with federal and state analysts. They are talking about through June 2020, there being a 15 to 20% decrease in sales and gross domestic product. Will that filter down to us? Are we really going to see a 10, 15, 20% decrease um, in building permits? Just don't know. Um, there are construction loans out there that maybe are funding these projects that they're uh, pressing on with them. Time will tell. Next slide, please. So this is the recording fees graph and recording fees is a good indicator of real estate, uh, mortgages, and this has stayed pretty stable through the years. 
and the actuals is real close to the average of $166,827 per year. To date, we have collected $151,172. We have the same projections, again, the top projection being, what if we only collect as much as we did last year? Uh, the middle projection being, what if we only collect 95% of what we collected last year? And then the bottom value, the 152,548 is what it would look like if we collected only 90%. Next slide, please. The documentary stamp fees are also collected uh, on a lot of the real estate transactions in the Register of Deeds office and can be an indicator of the economy as a whole and more specifically to real estate type transactions. Uh, if you slide to the right under FY 2020 year to date, March 31st, the top value is the average over the past four years. On average, we have collected $688,305. Uh, so far to date, we've collected $550,202. The dotted lines to the right are the same. The top uh, red dotted line being, what if we collect nothing more than we did last year. The 727094, that's if we collect 95%. The 688826 is if we collect no more than 90% of what we collected um, last year. So much of the discussions with these analysts are, we're not quite sure beyond the short term where we're going with the economy. Uh, so that's why we're providing possible outcomes. Next slide, please. Local accommodations tax. This is a tax that we collect on short-term rentals shorter than 90 days. Uh, a good indicator of um, tourist industry, which is where we receive a lot of revenue from. Um, last year, we had a banner year we collected two million three hundred sixty two thousand one hundred and fifty seven dollars to date so far we have collected one million nine hundred twenty two thousand four hundred forty seven dollars um, that's just what we've collected to date that's not indicating that uh, we've had any kind of dip as of yet so council has passed an ordinance uh banning these short-term rental stays, I believe through May 1st. So um, that negates any revenue from April. And depending on future decisions, we'll indicate where we go from here. Um, so um, the low here, if we only collected 90%, uh, that would be the orange bar at the bottom, that would be $2,019,644. And perhaps we'll collect as much as uh, last year if there's any pent up demand and perhaps the ban is lifted come May 1st. Um, difficult to project that. Next slide, please. Hospitality tax goes very hand in hand uh, with accommodations tax, although the local taxpayers pay the hospitality tax as well. That's the tax, uh, sales tax on the restaurant bills. Uh, to the far right, you'll see what we've collected year to date at $2,287,075. The average that we collect over the past four years, just above that value is $2,938,230. Uh, the state, the governor has banned local uh, eating establishments. That will have a large impact on uh, what our future collections will be. Uh, if there's a swift uh, resolution to the COVID issue, then perhaps some pent up demand will uh, be realized and tax receipts would increase in. Uh, we may realize what uh, we collected last year, the 3075295 um, It's hard to guess. Um, 
have no indication that I've seen of what the plans are to lift that ban. Next slide, please. All right, so this is not a dollar value graph. It's uh, tonnage collected uh, at the landfill of construction and demolition debris. And that's uh, a measure often of construction. So that has stayed very consistent over the past few years. So far at the landfill, they have collected 20,709 tons of CND debris. Um, it's again, if maybe I'm not sure if it's logical that these construction projects, if they're not going to be hindered because they have construction loans, just what's going to happen? Um, uh, you know, are they going to continue bringing in this debris to give us optimism that uh, construction is going on as planned? Just don't know. Next slide, please. All right, so uh, I wanted to touch base with health insurance. This has uh, been a very difficult issue, a cost to get our arms around. Uh, just a little bit of history. If you go back to the left side under 2016, you see cost of $3,729,205 and one right next to it, a similar cost. That is when we are on the state PIBA plan. We were not self-insured. 2018 is when we became self-insured and we went from $3,869,412 to $6,347,543. After 18, it began to level off but continued to increase. The much of the increase between FY18 or 19, excuse me, FY19 and 20, at least the largest increase has been in hospital visits. Um, there's a lot of HIPAA protection laws out there. We don't, we're not able to drill down uh, and find out anything more than that at this point. So it's difficult for us to address, to strategize and plan how to, uh, reduce or contain hospital visit costs. It's not only hospital visits, that's just the largest of the ones. Next slide, please. So what's next? Um, the state and federal analysts, they're talking about 15 to 20% decreases in sales and GDP between now and the end of June. Uh, one of the state analysts, uh, Frank Rainwater with the uh, Department of Fiscal Affairs at the state, that projected signs of recovery would be as soon as January 2021. That's one person's opinion. Um, although I do know he's well respected in that area. Uh, how long will the state and local bans on the tourism activities of uh, dining and rentals continue in place. Um, we're at the mercy and discretion of the local and state governments to make that call. And obviously that'll be in large part to uh, the level of COVID exposure we might be incurring. Uh, health insurance costs this is a big ticket item. And I know we've uh, put together sort of an ad hoc task force to study this. Uh, in fact, we have an upcoming meeting re, uh, regarding this, and we're going to focus on that uh, particular topic. We're calling in everybody that um, has some sort of ownership in that, and we're going to spend an afternoon and tackle that subject um, in hopes of uh, finding a way to contain it. Um, next slide, please. Oh, so if uh, you have any other questions regarding this material, I'll be glad to give you what answers that I can at this time.
questions from uh, Council uh, for Mr. Uh, Kilcullen? Hey, this is uh, Raymond. Yes, I sir. A question on the health. I got a question on the health insurance. I, I wasn't here when we went from uh, um, the private self-insured, so to speak. Um, is there is there any any other counties going through the same health insurance problems we have, and have, have we asked to see what? they're doing to remedy the problem? I can tell you that back in 16 and 17, when we were comp contemplating this, uh, we were trying to mirror what they are doing in the city of Myrtle Beach. I'm not in contact with any of them, so I don't know that they're actually having those problems. I'll be happy to inquire. They're the only other uh, government entity that I know that's uh, self-funded. Mr. Chairman, a question for Mr. Kilcullen. Is there any way possible that you or we can go back and compare what we are now paying and what we would be paying if we were still with PIBA. Is there any way to make that comparison? I would imagine that PIBA historical data may be available and I can inquire with them and Thank let you, you know. <laughs> any other questions for Mr. Kilcullen? Mr. Carolina, you have a question? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? We can barely hear you. Go ahead. All right. Uh, regarding mm -hmm. the increase in costs, um, as displayed, on a self insurance program where we are self insured, is there a give and take factor there where once we, uh, if we're looking at the overall cost, and you indicated that the cost increase came about because of uh, visitation, is that correct? Uh, activity at the hospital, yes, going yes. to the hospital. So any gain that we would have made on a self insurance, let's say a self insurance program, is that future? Is it a give and take situation? Mm -hmm. Once you get your employees orientated to uh, regular um, medical uh, regimen, you're going for your annual checkups, you're exercising, all these recommendations, taking your medication, and it's uh, again, initially, you're trying to hold the line. You may have employees that once they uh, start their residence, they're discovering things that they never knew they uh, had or they now had to be maintained. But under this self-insurance program, is there a give and take in premium? One year you may pay this, and if there is a, it appears that the employees are holding the line, they're maintaining that there's a return of premium feature. No, not currently. Yeah. And we're trying to mirror the um, PIBA plan. Now, yeah. I will tell you that um, you brought up a good point. We've encouraged employees to get checked out, and there may be an element to this of people who felt prior to getting what they felt was inexpensive health care, um, they think, oh, this is a bargain. Now I need to start going. So there might have been some pent up demand uh, once we implemented the care here facility here in town for the employees. In fact, there's been a lot of discussion about that. And I think there's some validity to that uh, notion. OK, very good. And, um... We have yeah. very 
even with care hair being our in-house um, health care provider, we have very limited information due to HIPAA protections. So we get very generalized information. We do see which health care providers are being paid, but we have no idea which employees are going for what uh, procedures. And, um, you know, that's why we have the, um, we have an ad, um, healthcare administrator that views the claims for us uh, and uh, refers them to, uh, to different insurance policies to make sure we get reimbursed, you know, to cover certain um, thresholds we've tried to be insured for. Um, Ed, this is Raymond. Have, what, what is our uh, healthcare cost uh, per, broken down per employee average? Uh, I and would have to get back with. The, I I do not have that figure right now. I would have to get back with you. Um, how, how many how many total employees we got? Um, Six hundred and fifty, roughly. So that's going to be uh, around thirteen thousand dollars. I take it with seven point nine million spent. What and what would be the average of counties? other counties in South Carolina that is self-insured like we are? Are we in the ballpark or are we way out there? Just, we don't have anything, you know, don't have any information to compare that to. Um, that's nothing that we've looked at here. Um, I can certainly go out to the other counties, um, certainly to their websites and I should be able to find uh, county employment figures and, um, you know, the financial statements are public, so I should be able to get back with you on some sort of numbers along that line. Any other questions for Mr. Kil Kil Killen? Kil Cullen? Thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, it's uh, apparent we need to uh, take a look at our uh, health uh, health programs. Um, Good job. Ed. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so that brings us to the end of our agenda. Um, open the floor for a, a motion to uh, adjourn. So moved, Mr. Chair. Motion by Mr. Charlton. Is there a second? Second. A second. Second by Mr. Newton. Uh, this uh, meeting is adjourned. I wish uh, all of you and your families stay safe, and we'll uh, see you soon. <laughs>